Hi, welcome back to my lecture. I'm Joey Capizonda. I'm a communication research instructor at the Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Marikina. Since most of you will do descriptive research, for this lecture, we will discuss the most common techniques under the descriptive method of research. But before that, let's have a short recap. In my previous lecture, I've mentioned about the three kinds or three classifications of research according to time element which are historical research, descriptive research, and experimental research. Again, descriptive research is a purposive process of gathering, analyzing, classifying, and tabulating data. Data about prevailing conditions, beliefs, practices, processes, trends, and cause and effect relationships. And then making adequate and accurate interpretation of this data with or without the aid of statistical methods. Take note of the keyword, prevailing conditions. Meaning to say, you do descriptive research when you want to study prevailing or existing conditions, ongoing events or situations, trends, etc. For example, you may want to study on the role of media in times of crisis, especially this time that we have the COVID-19 pandemic. You may also focus on the non-renewal of franchise of ABS-CBN and its impact to the press freedom and many other topics. Under the descriptive method of research, we have three techniques commonly used, which are survey, case studies, and content analysis. Let's begin with survey. When we say survey, it is a fact-finding study with adequate and accurate interpretation. Survey is used to collect demographic data such as people's behavior, their attitude, their interest, their beliefs, their opinions, their judgment, their perceptions. Take note of the keyword demographic data. When you say demographic data, it pertains to the statistical characteristics of a certain population, of a certain group. For example, data about their age range, data about their ethnic group, data about their interests. Once you have this data, you begin to analyze and then you organize this data since you have plenty of data. And then you may come up with interpretations based on the data that you have collected. Again, please remember, survey is used to collect demographic data. Actually, we have many types of survey. In my list, I have at least 16 types, but we will not talk about this in this lecture. You may refer to the handouts uploaded in your virtual classroom. Another technique under the descriptive method of research is case study. So what is case study? When you say case study, it is comprehensive, it is detailed, it is complete, and in-depth study or analysis of, of an individual, institutions, groups, or communities. As compared to survey wherein you gather demographic data, when it comes to case study, you take an account of all pertinent data, pertinent information, or aspects of one thing or situation. Take note, when you do case studies, it must be comprehensive and it must be detailed. In case studies, you usually look for family history, education history or educational background, economic history, social history, or psychological test results of your participants. And talking about the data gathering instruments, when you do a survey, you usually use the questionnaire. But when it comes to case studies, almost all data gathering instruments are used. First, of course, is the interview. Interview is very important in doing case studies. You also do some observation, and then sometimes you provide questionnaires. Some researchers also conduct psychological tests. Sometimes they look at anecdotal records. They look at autobiographies. In case studies, you also use scorecards, checklists, and rating scales. Let's proceed with the third most common technique under the descriptive method of research, which is content analysis. Some researchers call it documentary analysis. Content analysis is a research technique which deals with documentary materials, materials that are already existing, materials that are available, or 
materials that can be accessed. For instance, you may study on the portrayal of women in a tabloid newspaper in your community. Newspapers that were published between January 2020 to June 2020. So I assume copies of these newspapers are available. In doing content analysis, you have to remember that you need to be objective. There should be no bias in the process from the selection and classifications of materials to be analyzed as well as in your sampling design and most especially in the interpretation of results. In doing content analysis, you have to remember that you need to be systematic. This is very important because you are dealing with a huge number of documents. Going back to the topic that I have mentioned earlier, if you want to focus on the portrayal of women in a tabloid newspaper from January to June 2020, imagine you are dealing with newspapers published between January to June 2020, so that's six months. So you need to be systematic on how you're going to handle these materials. Of course, part of being systematic is you follow the scientific method of research which we have already discussed in our previous lectures. You may also refer to the handouts uploaded in our virtual classroom. Okay, let's talk about the instrument used in content analysis. Usually you use tally sheets or checklists. Remember when you do your instrument in doing content analysis, it must contain all the items and aspects that you want to study. Another characteristic of content analysis is that it is quantitative. Interpretations and conclusions from findings have to depend almost entirely on the frequency counts of items or the aspects of the study. All right, so let's have a short recap of the three techniques commonly used under the descriptive method of research. First, we have survey. Second, we have case studies. Third is content analysis. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you learn a thing or two from my lecture. We'll see each other again in my future lectures. Bye!